Good morning, Mother's Oatmeal Ministry. This is Pastor Precious Collins, and I am Micaiah's mom, and this ministry is called Mother's Oatmeal Ministry. Listen, Mother's Oatmeal Ministry was started because my daughter saved my life, and I was able to save her life. You may have heard the story, but um, when I had Micaiah, I was 261 pounds, was morbidly obese, pre-diabetic had gestational hypertension and the Lord had been impressing on me for some time about my health and my eating habits, but I was stubborn and would not change. But then I had this little beautiful baby girl that I fell in love with that captured my heart. And we had this baby girl, my husband and I um, have been married almost seven years now. So I definitely want to give a shout out to pastor and co-pastor Ezekiel Collins. This is a tag team effort. And it would be uh, neglectful of me not to mention his part in this. He upheld me and I helped uphold the baby. So, but she was born with food allergies and, and an intolerance to cow's milk, uh, soy and egg, and also as a newborn tree nut. And she had reflux. So anything that I ate uh, during the breastfeeding period was affecting her. So I had to get rid of those allergens as well. She wouldn't take formula without vomiting. And it would, because of her reflux and other health issues, Larry Malaysia, she would actually stop breathing for a moment. <clears throat> so the Lord caused me in an instant to change my life, to live a better life in order to save my daughter's life through breastfeeding. I had to stop eating dairy, soy, egg, anything that would cause her reflux by her ingesting or uh, eating my breast milk. She was better because of the changes that I made. So that saved her life, but actually she saved my life because by making those changes, I lost 45 pounds. Then fast forward down the road, the Lord started to impress upon me or speak to me even more clearly about what to take out of my diet. You see, our bodies should be living sacrifices, holy and acceptable unto God as our reasonable service. And the scripture goes on to say, be not conformed to this world, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So this process where I was, it's kind of like a lifestyle fast. I was reading my life of things that I was so dependent on. It kind of had the same effect as a fast. I was able to hear God more clearly about my diet and about my call in this earth. So um, dairy, soy, and egg is continuing to be out of my diet. I had bariatric surgery by Dr. Westmoreland in, at St. Thomas in Murfreesboro, and I'm 100 pounds down today. Uh, I call myself and Micaiah, uh, Micaiah because we have in putting Christ first and in receiving his comfort. Isaiah 66 verse 13 tells us that God comforts us in a way that a mother comforts her own child and we'll be comforted over Jerusalem. And what does that all mean? That means that uh, when we are in a place and, and I kind of parallel Jerusalem to that place of, of holiness, like a holy place, the being in the place that God wants us to be at a particular time. So and not just physically, but being in a mindset in an environment where you can hear God in a holy environment. Jerusalem is a holy place for the holy people. So and I'm being in a spiritual mindset of holiness through fasting, through prayer, um, through making yourself a living sacrifice, through changing in order to prioritize what God has for your life. If you're in that moment right now, God is giving you a wake up call. Stick with me because I'm telling you there's a word from the Lord for you today. But in that place of that I'm prepared paralleling to Jerusalem in that holy state of mind that we achieve um, through fasting, through prayer, through ridding our diet of things that distract us. You know, it's a distraction when you've ate so much sugar that you're just loopy and you want to go lay down. It's a distraction when you've had so much saturated fat from, you know, deep fried foods that all you can do is just go lay down and you're not really ready to uh, be distraction free and hear from God. But taking those things out of my diet, I'm a hundred pounds down y'all. And I had spend time with God um, every morning in devotion. Uh, I get up before the family and I listen either to Joyce Meyer or the Bible project, or just sitting quietly with the Lord, uh, Joel Osteen, whatever it is that God wants, who God God's vessel wants to use to speak to me. That's what I make time for. And then also every other week, um, we have this service called Devotion in Nature, which is what we are here for today. So I just wanted to give you a little background on how Mother's Hope Mill Ministry came about. The name Mother's Hope Mill Ministry, because <laughs> we are a church. We are a 501c3 nonprofit LLC. So we're a religious nonprofit. And uh, we have a board of directors. Shout out to my brother, Dante Bond, to my mom, Pat Bond, to my um 
mother mentor, uh, Mama Nina Davis Harmon and my husband Ezekiel Collins, even those who have served in the past, James Cooper, and those many, many spiritual advisors that I have, you know, Pastor Geneva Newman and Pastor B.J. Strother, uh, even the examples in childhood from Shield of Faith, uh, uh, Apostle, Apostles Henry and Marie Alexander, so many who have just been a blessing to me and those that we're serving under even now. You know, we have a host of spiritual mentors, and I just thank God for those people who are helping us to uh, stay on the straight and narrow. But uh, the name Mothers Up Mo Ministry came when on April 23rd of um, 2021, excuse me, April 23rd of 2021, I believe it was. And it was a memory of me and my grandmother. My grandma had passed away by then, but it was a memory of me and my uh, grandmother sitting at a table. She used to live off, I want to say that was Buchanan or I can't remember the exact street name, but she had this mobile home and we were sitting at her table and she was, she had just artistically prepared oatmeal. Everything she did was an excellence, but she had made me a bowl of oatmeal and, um, she was sitting at the table and I was eating it and she was doing her nails and the Lord just impressed upon me what she taught me in that moment by example. And it was all over oatmeal. And what she taught me was not through a lecture, you know, a beautifully crafted speech. It was that she did everything in excellence. And that, you know, a lot of people look down on mobile homes. Her mobile home was so pristine because she did everything in excellence. Her carpets were flawless. Her dishes were always clean. She ran her household uh, with such excellence and such detail and such time. Her pants were always never wrinkled or her, you, you know, her clothes were always starched. Her uh, nails were always pristine, not because she could afford it, but because she sat down and took time to use a nail file and clean the edges off and do it herself. And her food was always so delicious because she didn't just throw it together and grab a cereal bar, but she learned how to, you know, take those oats that absorb this water and put milk in it and stir it at a certain pace. Everything she did was in excellence. And she taught me about how important Bible nutrition and home economics was by example. And that's what Mother's Oatmeal Ministry is about. It's about teaching the next generation about Bible nutrition and home economics. Now there's many outreaches that we have, but at the core of it, Isaiah 66, verse 13, God comforts us in a way that a mother, and for some of you, it, it was a grandmother if your mother wasn't there. For some of you, it was a foster parent. God has put uh, the Holy Spirit in a mother figure for you and has comforted you in a way that a mother comforts her own child. And that's what we are here to do. We are here to prepare the next generation to meet the Lord, and we're passing down um, what Josie Grisby and what my mother and what those who God used to be somewhat of a wound for me until I got to this point where I'm now a mom. Woohoo! I'm so excited. <laughs> so um, through all that, we are here for devotion in nature. And before we get started, let's pray. And I have to tell you this message. I'm telling you, stick with me because it is not my message. It's the Lord's message. I always have a certain way that I like to do things. I like to have a teacher copy. And I have that today um, that you can get for your Sunday schools and such and a, and a student copy. But as you can see, there's going to be portions in here that are blank. The Lord told me to delete my plan, you know, the lesson objectives, delete them because we're going to go through that together. The materials, delete them because I want to speak through you. All right. So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this day, God. We ask you right now that you would touch heal, deliver, bring out, shake up, wake up, stand up, pick up, renew, pour out your anointing on these people that are watching today, God. Do what only you can do, Lord Jesus. Help marriages, God, that are at a fallen out of place and fallen out of alignment with your will for the for that marriage, that union in the earth, God. I pray right now that you break yokes that are not of you and that you repair and bind yokes that are of you, Lord God, that threefold cord, Lord, that is not easily broken, God. We ask your Holy Spirit to come into this moment, God, and take 
over. Take over, God. Do what only you can do, God. Oh, God, I ask, God, that these words be of you. I'm just a vessel, God, that you are using, Lord, but it is your spirit, God, that is going to bring about the supernatural. And we believe for it. We claim the supernatural. For those who are not even married, God, you're going to speak to them today about their marriage with you, God, about their union with you, God. We ask that you save those who are not saved today, God. And we ask that this message continue to be a blessing to those in future generations. God, we ask that you protect this message on the media platforms, God, that it will never be taken down, Lord, but it will always be there, that your word will always be accessible to those that are in need, God. And we rebuke the enemy. We push back on his plans. We cancel his assignment and we claim all that you're going to do in this moment and at our in-person service today, God. We thank you. We thank you for your blood. We thank you, God. We thank you for your blood. We thank you for loving us enough to send your only begotten son. Oh, hallelujah, God. What a sacrifice, God. What a father you were to us, Lord God, that you protect us, God. And thank you for the fathers, God, who have in their heart through you, God, to be protectors, God. We ask that you empower them with finance, empower them with direction, empower them, Lord God, with a hunger and a thirst for righteousness, Lord God, that they may be filled, that their families may be filled, God, that the next, that they'll be able to leave an inheritance for the next generation. Oh, We thank you right now, Lord God, for pouring out your spirit, God. Fill somebody with the Holy Ghost, Lord God. Fill us with fire, Lord God. Stir up the gifts within us, Lord Jesus. We thank you, God, for what you're doing. In Jesus' name, God, we thank you that you came into the world not to condemn the world, but that you came that the world might be saved. Save us through these words and through these testimonies, God. Bless Micaiah, God. Bless our household, God. Oh, God, we're not going to let you go until you bless us. Touch us, Lord God. Even if we have to walk away with a limp, Lord God, we are going to stay in your presence, God. We are going to wrestle with this word until it causes us to walk up right before you, God, because we will not stand being apart from your presence, God. We're going to rid our life of sin. We're going to rid our life of every stronghold, of everything that so easily besets us, God. And in this moment, God, you supernaturally speak to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Are y'all ready for the word? Are y'all ready for the word? Hallelujah. God is going to do it today. Hallelujah. Okay. This lesson is um, the topic is biblical marriage. And remember, every year we address seven topics uh, that provide Christian foundation for our youth. Those seven topics are biblical nutrition, uh, biblical prayer, biblical marriage, biblical sex, uh, biblical music and spiritual songs, justification by faith, and Christian vocation. All right. So today we are talking about biblical marriage. My husband did the first uh, the first session, which is on second Saturdays, virtual on YouTube. And I'm doing the second session, which the adult message is pre-recorded. And then when we come together, we're going to be doing uh, kid-friendly activities, gardening today at 10 o'clock, painting and taking a walk. So we're going to be making a mess and, and having fun with our children and grandparents and uh, meditating on the word of God. So here is the word of God for the people of God. The lesson title today is called Repurposed for God's Glory. Repurposed for God's Glory. The time is, we're 13 minutes and 42 seconds in. So Repurposed for God's Glory. And a subtitle is Save That Trash. Save That Trash. Um, our service objectives are the objectives for devotion in nature um, as the revised adopted Objectives from the board for 2024 are to engage the Holy Spirit. There's nine objectives to engage the Holy Spirit as creator in a restorative environment, such as being at a park or at an open green space or sitting by still waters, um, in an effort to renew the inner man that has to do with our mood, our memory retention, our directed attention. Um, it has to do with getting down in the, to, the, to the heart of the issues, why we can't really hear or discern. We have to deal with our mood and our memory retention, those physical aspects that kind of keep us from being able to uh, have the Lord uh, speak to us in, uh, in, in our soul and our spirit. We are here to offer faith-based community 
for Micaiah Collins. Amen. She's homeschooled. She doesn't have brothers and sisters right now. So this is her faith-based community. We're here to preserve the observation of the Lord's Supper led by a male co-teacher. So my husband will be doing um, the Lord's Supper today in person. We are here to inspire the congregation to remember God through worship and prayer. That's our annual objective. This year, our topic is make it personal, a year to remember God. And, and our annual objective, annual topic comes from uh, Judges chapter five, specifically verse seven. Uh, if you go back and read that. We are here to teach Christian education on seven fundamental topics of the Christian faith using the Holy Bible and Mother's Oatmeal Ministries faith-based early learning through adulthood developmental standards. And those are those seven topics that I gave you. Um, and you're welcome to have a copy of those developmental standards. Um, number six, we're here to engage families through mentor and mentee relationships. So today we're talking about marriage, but we encourage you to have a walking partner. You know, that may be a sister, that may be a, a grandparent, that may be your neighbor. So somebody that can uh, partner with you, it doesn't necessarily have to be mentor, mentee, it can be a sisterhood or brotherhood, but that type of relationship. And we're engaging our family of faith, not just by a lot but engage families of faith. Uh, we're here number seven to demonstrate routine Bible reading and meditation for the common man. What is it to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? It's to spend time in his word and it's to spend time meditating on the things of God. Amen. It's to have a Sabbath. That's what Saturday is about here. Mother's Up Ministry is a Sabbath personally for me where we read the Bible and meditate on the word. And you're here to number eight, share the gospel with young children through visual arts. That's Micaiah's ministry. She's been called to do art. And let me tell you, she uh, shares the gospel through that. We are here to, to have free play and faith community for our children. We're here number nine to invite unbelievers into personal relationship with Jesus Christ. So either at the end of this message or in person at Smith Springs, we are going to be inviting you into personal relationship with Jesus Christ if you have never made Christ your personal savior. We are here. Listen, the background, here's some background information for you. Biblical marriage is the third topic of Mother's Oatmeal Ministries faith-based early learning through adulthood developmental standards. And this is what we believe about biblical marriage. If you're trying to decide, hey, is this a church home for you? This is what we believe about biblical marriage. Number one, um, marriage is a practice of covenant, according to Ecclesiastes chapter four, verse 12. For those of you taking notes in Matthew chapter 19, verse six, and it is a practice of cleaving, not just covenant, but also of cleaving between male and female, according to Genesis chapter two, verse 24. Marriage is prescribed by God. This is the second thing we believe about biblical marriage. It is prescribed by God to heal human loneliness, okay? There was something amiss there in the garden when Adam was by himself, right? And the Lord healed that. The Lord, the, our God, our, uh, our God, our doctor <laughs> healed that. He prescribed physical companionship. Genesis chapter two, verse 18, um, to heal loneliness. That physical companionship heals that loneliness that we have. Procreation is what marriage is about. Marriage is about procreation. Genesis chapter nine, verse one, or about multiplication as well. It's about what you produce for the glory of God. That will be physical children. But for some of you, that is the father figure relationships that you have by serving in your church or by um, being a part of a big brothers, big sisters program. It is what we would do for the next generation to get them to know the Lord. It's about physical pleasure. Uh, uh, the entire book of Song of Solomon will take you there, but especially uh, chapter seven, verses eight through 10. So it is about uh, spending time together. It's about physical intimacy. That's what the Lord used to heal human, late, uh, human loneliness in the Garden of Eden was marriage. So that's what marriage is about. Number three, marriage is also symbolic of Christ's love for the church. Ephesians chapter five, verse 32. So it's not just about compatibility. No, it's about demonstrating covenant to the world. It's about demonstrating a holy covenant, a holy vow, a holy union that is parallel to Christ's love for the church. <clears throat> and number four, it is marriage is good and should be consecrated by the word of God and prayer. Even as early as a time in uh, you know the book of first Timothy, um, there were people there who opposed marriage and were saying that it wasn't a good thing, as well as eating certain foods and, you know, other things that were just preposterous what they were saying. But Timothy 
uh, Paul's mentee helps to confront those things that are not in alignment with the teachings of Jesus. And in first Timothy chapter four, verses three through five, he specifically lets us know that marriage is a good thing based on the teachings of Jesus and that we should consecrate it with a word and by prayer. All right. So our lesson objectives, remember I told you I left that blank. Usually our lesson objectives um, are already written out, but this is what the Lord impressed upon me today. I came across this um, book, Okay, I picked out a book to read and it's called Save That Trash. And I'm not going to read it right now. I'm going to read it today during uh, the in-person devotion in nature, but it's written by Marianne Dobeck and illustrated by Meryl Henderson. And basically it goes through several household items that you would typically just throw away after using them. This is the finished product, y'all, <laughs> all, all, how the things were repurposed. But it started with, that looks like what, a butter container possibly that, you know, you're done with the butter, so you're going to throw it out. But it says here, nope, save that trash. Let's make a flower pot. So they it says, make it clean, add dirt, plant some seeds, and place the flower pot in the sun. So there it is. And then it repurposes several things like the paper bag, and they make a puppet out of it. Um, uh, an oatmeal container. Now, you know, that's right up my alley right there. And it makes a drum. They made a drum out of it. OK, and uh, there's a hanger and like a milk carton and some tape and they made a bird feeder out of it. OK, and then they've got this uh, mason jar and they have uh, recreated it and blinged it up and made a, a vase for flowers. You can see that at the bottom there. And, ants, you know, it has this a carton that is repurposed. They would be all this repurposed and they make a little caterpillar. Um, now that was really creative there. They put some eyes on it, made a caterpillar. And then it goes on to say, save that trash. Don't throw it out, make something from it. Wow. Okay. So what the Lord was telling me today is that marriage is a good thing, but through life circumstances, through loss of jobs, through changes in health, through hormonal changes, through physical changes, even through changes in our spiritual walk with the Lord. Because if we're uh, growing with the Lord, then we're going to change that. Our compatibility with our mate or the world's sense of compatibility changes because we are always changing. As long as you're living, you're going to be changing. And so our relationships can become unbalanced and unaligned with God's purposes for marriage in the earth. And sometimes because we are Im impressing upon our spouse something that is worldly instead of God's view of, of marriage, right? So, um, and, and changes even in, in grieving, grieving loved ones that have been lost. And, and that will even change you as a person, you know, especially if there's someone close to my father passed away, you know, I changed and it's not necessarily a bad thing that I'm, I'm a different person than I, than I was at the core of it. I'm still a child of God. I'm still on the earth to do what God called me to do, but my capacity had to increase. So I had to change. Even when you become a mom, you know, there's, there's science, you know, God's in the science too, because he created the earth, <laughs> the heavens and the earth. So he's in the science as much as the world wants to take him out. But uh, even in, in moms, when we become pregnant and we have children, you know, the gray matter in our brain increases, our capacity increases. You know, we, we, our capacity increases when we step into destiny. You know, and when you go into marriage, you're going to have one capacity. But by the time you get, you know, four or five years down the road, even six months down the road, your capacity to love that person, if you've been seeking the Lord, is going to increase. So as they change and as you change, if you're both seeking Christ, who you were in the beginning is not going to satisfy that person that you're with now. You have to continue to change. So the objective here is today. Um, the Lord gave me a scripture, uh, Luke chapter four verse four. And it's that scripture that we always quote about, you know, and Jesus answered, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Well, I wanted to look up more about that word live, live. And um, it is pronounced Strong's. Let me let you hear it. Strong's G 2198. Zao. Zao. Strong's G to 2198, Zao. That's what that word live means. By the way, this is blueletterbible.org. Y'all see that down there? Y'all get to know uh, blueletterbible.org. If you don't own a, a concordance, this is a great way in the new, new age to stay up on Greek and 
the Strong's definitions of these words. But I want to read more about what that really means. I'm going to go to the outline of the Bible usage of that word, Strong's 2198, right? The Bible usage, you'll see that at the bottom. The Bible usage of that word means to live, breathe. Uh Uh-oh, there's Mother's Oatmeal Ministry. When you eat oatmeal, what you got to do? You got to... Blow on that spoon. You can't just put it in your mouth. You'll burn, burn, uh, burn your your tongue raw. Okay, you gotta breathe. You have to. Um, I'm trying to get it where y'all can see it. There, excuse me. Oh, there we go. The light went out. Let me try it again. Breathe. Be among the living, not lifeless, not dead. To enjoy real life. To have a uh, true life worthy of the name. Active, blessed. We're talking about marriage today. Is your marriage alive? Endless in the kingdom to live, to pass, I'm going to read the rest, to pass life in the matter of living and acting, of mortals of character, living water, having vital power in itself and exerting the same upon the soul, to be full of vigor, to be fresh, strong, efficient, active, powerful, uh, Efficient, excuse me. I don't even know how to say that word at the bottom, y'all. <laughs> Somebody help me. E F F I C A efficacious. We're gonna have to look that one up. Woo! All right, here we go. So, does this describe your marriage? I know it says man shall not live by bread alone, but marriage, come on, that's the revelation. Marriage shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So, what I want our objective to be today is. How can we make our marriages live? And I come to make the argument that we make our marriages live by we save that trash. Don't throw it out, but repurpose your time with your spouse for the glory of God. Don't throw out or don't leave unused the time that you have with your spouse. Make the most of the time you have with your spouse. And if you're not married, with your family, with your family of faith and use it for the glory of God. How are we going to do that? I want you to take a pen right now and write that down. Amen. Amen. I have misplaced my pen, but we are going to ask ourselves, how can we make our marriage live? Marriage live. And remember that scripture is about man alone. So how can we make, how can we live full of vigor? Well, we have to save and make the best of unused time. Save and make the best of unused time. So our lesson objective is I will, and if you're writing it in, live. You could put Zao, Z-A-O. I will live. I would like to put live richly. I will live richly by making the best of unused time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, glory. Yesterday, I went to do two things with my family. I went to story time at Smyrna Library and we did not, uh, I was still at work and my husband uh, was still trying. He said he was trying to get her together in the bathroom and he had done her hair. So he was a little bit late for story time and they didn't let him in the room for story time. And as I was pulling up, I was going to go do something else, but I was listening to the spirit. I was going to run to the doctor's office and grab a sample of the a box of pea milk. Uh, but the Lord told me, no, wait and get over to the library. Ooh, the spirit will speak to you. So I got over to the library. And just as I was pulling up, he was walking Makai to the car because they had told him, hey, we can't let you in because you're late. And I said, wait, you know, hold on. I parked and I took her right back in there because we're not going to let this time get away from us. That time could have been considered trash. You know, we made all this effort and got our hair done and got her all put together. And, you know, for dads, that's a lot of work. It's a lot of work for moms, too. But for somebody who hasn't been doing it, you know, I didn't got professional at it. But um, uh, he got her there and we walked her right back in next to the story time room. This is the big playroom area. And um, he didn't really know about that area. And then there's magnet tiles on the tables. And then there's a little reading area. No. We're going to make the best of this unused time. Maybe we didn't get to do what we intended to do by coming here, 
But God has another plan. Are you in that place with your marriage? Maybe it's not exactly where you intended it to be, right? Maybe you thought you would have had children by now. Or maybe you thought, you know, man, you didn't want children right at this time. You know, that was unexpected. Or, you know, it wasn't exactly how you thought. But guess what? God has a plan. And if you're willing to make the best of that unused time, he will repurpose it for his glory that will benefit you and those around you. So we went on in there and we didn't have a nasty attitude with him. I said, thank you. How you doing, Miss Nicole? And all them, you know, they got to have their rules in there, too. Um, and then we went in that playroom. We did the magnet tiles. She was able to build and interact with me. She sat on the floor and met, made a little friend there. And I, I met a parent there and we were reading the books. And then she went over to the play area and played with some cars on the floor. And we did all that. And then I wanted to go to the playground that was convenient right there in the back. But my husband didn't want to do that. We're talking about using our time, you know, living. I will live and uh by using the best of unused time. So so I, I came into agreement with him. I could have argued and said, oh, she's not ready to get in the car. She hadn't even had time to play. And I felt that. I felt that pushback going on of wanting to, to do it my way, you know. And and she had a little bit of that going on, too, because she didn't want to get in the car. See, she started crying. And then I started getting protective and being like, oh, why didn't we just use that one? But God had given him something. And so we went over to um, Mill Ridge Park. And you see... When we got there, there was this slide. Let me show you all this slide, my word. Let me show you this slide. Y'all see this slide? <laughs> I had no intentions going there of getting on this slide. This is at Mill Ridge Park, y'all, in Antioch, Tennessee. Y'all see how tall that is? And let me tell you about this slide. We were walking over there. Makai had just gotten off her bike, and she wanted to get down. And down here at the bottom is a place where she can just crawl, start crawling up. So she started crawling up and something in me just started crawling behind her. I don't know where that came from. I know it's the Holy Spirit. It wasn't my will. And we started crawling up there and the parts that we could see of it weren't really that intimidating. That It wasn't that intimidating. We could do that. But the problem was what was hidden up there in that wooden piece up there. When we got up there, what y'all can't see is that they got these ropes real condensed. So I'm trying to maneuver and keep her going up. And she's trying to figure out where's the opening and, and not paying attention where the opening is. So I'm trying to, I'm stuck and I'm uncomfortable. And, I, you know, I'm trying to say, go, go, because I don't want to be in this position. And it was something else. There's people behind us trying to get up. And, you know, by the time we got to the top, then there was the slide. They're opening for the slide, which looked completely dark. And so she was like, mm -mm, mm -mm. she don't want to do it. She's scared. And so. But we did it. We went down there and we had a great time. And let me show you our faces. Oh, Lord. Oh, but uh, look at this. Oh, wait. Look at those faces, y'all, coming out of that slide. It was wonderful. It was unexpected, but it was a wonderful adventure for me and my daughter. And my husband cheered us on and took that picture. What am I trying to say here? That, was, that slide was kind of like marriage. <laughs> the parts that you see, that those ropes at the bottom, Hey, that looks pretty fun. Something in you, you know, at the beginning of things gives you that thrill, that infatuation, that that kind of physical attraction makes you, oh, yeah, I can handle this. Let's do it. You know, we're compatible. We did the premarital counseling. <laughs> we didn't did all that. We didn't. We, You know, we're committed. We got jobs and all that. Let's get married. Right. But it's what you don't see up here. That was Micaiah being born with food allergies. Oh, I didn't see that. I didn't see that marriage was going to bring me to a place of motherhood that required me to change. <laughs> I didn't see that. I didn't see the job fluctuations that came from me walking in my calling. We didn't see that. Things got tight. And so we didn't see the dark tunnel we were going to have to go through to get to the joy of that experience. Marriage can sometimes be like that. And what I'm telling you is God had a plan. It wasn't my plan, I didn't go there to get on the swing. I was just supporting my husband's plan. We're going to go over there. He had put the bike, her push trike in the trunk. He was ready. He had already prepared. And we got there and she did that. She rolled the bike around the track, and around the track. But there was something else God wanted us to get to. And that was that slide. For today's message to tell you that if you come into agreement with your spouse, 
on the plans that he has. My husband, for a moment, and it's not just coming into agreement with him. He had to come in agreement with me. We had to come in agreement to the Holy Spirit. Remember when I pulled up, he was leaving. So God had given me something to do to tell him, hey, no, we're going back in there. We're going to use this time. We're going to make the best of the magnetiles. We didn't make it here for story time, but we're going to be there for, you know, the interaction and having time with other children. That's social time. That's social piece. She needs that as well. Right. And time together as a family. So uh, another thing that came to my mind was live richly, live richly. We were there. Both of us were there. Sometimes we overlook the blessing and, and the change of God's plan. Both my husband and I were there with Micaiah. I don't take that for granted. Because most of the time when you go to the story time, it's one parent or the other. And usually it's the mom. And because they're doing the day, it would take like somebody rich, you know, kind of or retired, a retired family or somebody with, you know, you would imagine somebody who's rich doesn't have to work. Their parents don't have to work that they both could be there. And we're not rich financially, but the Lord has caused us to live richly by us following his plans for our lives. So it may seem like what you're going through right now is unfortunate and sad and a reason to stay home, you know, a loss of a job or a sickness or a loss of a relative, but get up. That's what God is saying. Wake up and use that unused time for his glory. God has a plan in it all. You may not understand it, but husbands come into agreement with your wives. Go back in there, you know, and you may feel defeated like, man, I didn't got up here, got this child's hair done, got this bag. You know, I had packed the bag before they go, but he got the bag together, got her in the restroom, got her to wash her hands and changed and finally got there and the door is closed. Oh, yeah. Is that your marriage? You didn't come together. You didn't got everything planned. We went through the COVID pandemic. Maybe your, your date at the venue got canceled, you know, because of COVID. You didn't done all this work, you know, and then you're turned away. There's a delay, but God is in the delay and the delay has no power over his purpose for your life. God can open doors that man cannot. God can close doors that man cannot. God can protect you when you step out on faith. Remember um, Moses and they crossed that Red Sea and they were out there and they were being pursued by the enemy and God closed up the sea of the enemy behind him. You may feel like that, like you've stepped out there on faith, but the enemy is closing in on your marriage, mm, making things tight, making things inconvenient, making things hard, making it seem like you're going to be overcome, making it seem like you're going to fail, like you're going to lose the house, like you're going to be divorced, like you can't take it anymore because you're working so much. Oh, he may make it seem tight, but God has a way of succumbing your enemy, of slowing that enemy down so that you can get to the promised land. You're not going to fail. You're not going to fail. If you keep your eyes on Jesus, you're going to make it to that promised land. You're going to make it to where God wants you to, where God wants you to be. And let me tell you, it may not be what your plans are, but God's plans are for you to Zao, Z-A-O, Zao. Live. Let's go back to what that means. Luke 4, 4. Live. And, uh, to live, to breathe, to be among the living, to enjoy real life. We were enjoying real life. Whatever circumstance brought us to that moment, God wanted husband and wife there together at the library with Micaiah. That is a rare thing that she had. Her upbringing is a rare thing. When we go to Devotion to Nature, her mom, her dad, her grandmother are going to be there and serving in ministry. And even those who are, you know, in the, in the family of faith with her, those on the board that can't be there in person. She has this rare upbringing because of those who may not be rich financially, but they're living rich because they have saved that trash. They've saved that unused time. They've saved that unused uh, gift, you know, and they've given it back to God. What gift that you have? Hallelujah. And focus on your gift. Sometimes it's discouraging. It used to be, it used to be discouraging for me to show about devotion to nature. And it's just me, my husband, and my daughter. 
And I used to want to get in flesh and tell my husband, would you just keep her for a few hours so I can go out there and invite people to come into the service? Mm -mm. That's not my role. <laughs> the Lord wants me to do the pre-recordings and to be there and get my hands in the dirt with her. And the Lord wants me, instead of being out there recruiting people to come, to be in here putting these dishes in the dishwasher and taking this trash out and getting that laundry done because all that serves my husband so that he can be freed up to pursue the promises of God on his life. So it may seem like failure to others, but to God, it is living richly. Hey, glory. Don't let society make you think that your marriage is not rich. Your marriage is not rich because seven years down the road, your cars aren't paid off or your house isn't paid off or you got student loans or this is not the way it should be. Or, you know, you don't have the, the years of experience in your field that it should, the, the world is confused. Don't buy into that confusion, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You know, submit your ways to God's ways. How do we live richly? How do we be full of vigor in our marriage? And that doesn't mean that you, you've got this worldly accomplishment within your marriage, that you're physically, you know, maybe you're in a season where your physical intimacy doesn't match what the world is saying your physical intimacy should be. And so you're pressuring spouse to do this or pressuring spouse to do that or you're not willing to do this, or you're not willing to do that. And there's this constant conflict because you're trying to compare yourselves to others when God wants you to become uh, connected for his purposes. That companionship for you may look different. That connection for you may look different. You know, when you're trying to just make ends meet, vacation may be staycation. Come on, come on. We're talking about biblical sex next month. <laughs> you might have a room for baby at your house and then a room for marriage at your house. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it don't have to be getting away because you can't afford it right now, but it could be getting down the hall, <laughs> Girl, somebody, you know, making best use of that nap time when baby's at nap time. That's some unused time. Come on, somebody. Marriage heals that physical intimacy. Marriage heals that loneliness. Marriage is about uh, companionship and physical pleasure, but it's about Christ's love for the church. It's about covering each other's um, offenses. It's about <clears throat> knowing the truth, consecrating your marriage with prayer, uh, like in First Timothy chapter four, verses three through five. It's about a uh, cleaving and covenant. That's what marriage is about. And maybe, maybe there was a door closed. I keep going back to that. Maybe there was some door closed. You found out you're infertile, so you're feeling less than not only as a woman, but as a wife. Or you found out, you know, God has called, you know, you never intended to be a pastor's husband. Come on, somebody. Come on. Because the Lord called me to pastor. Right. So my husband may think, oh, I was, you know, I didn't I didn't I didn't know she was going to be a pastor. But no, he remains secure in God enough to allow me to become what God has put in me. And it ain't the typical one. It's about bringing the word to the people in a way that shares my personal testimony and my personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And that has created an environment of protection for Micaiah. There's so much here that I wanted to share with you. And these this lesson plan is available. But what I challenge you to do today, what I challenge you to do today is when you get this lesson plan, I'll have copies for you if you're in person or I can email it to you. Come up with your objective with your spouse, or with your personal relationship with Christ, okay? I will, and remember, we're going to fill in live, or Z-A-O, -Z I will live richly by making the best of my unused time. That may mean getting up before, you know, if you're already, if you've got, you know, some insomnia going on or whatever, getting up before the family, instead of just making that unused time, use that as time with the Lord, not busy time, because this time right here, I could I could have laundry done, I could have dishes done, I could have the floor in my mouth, I could have walked Angel the dog, I could have you know done so many different things, but the Lord wanted time with me, 
Sometimes the best use of your unused time is being still and knowing that he is God. Listening to the word of God. Making time to make a mess with your, with your daughter out at a park or have a picnic, or fly a kite, or take a walk with grandma, or have a bowl of oatmeal at a kitchen table, and watch and compliment grandma for doing her nails so pristinely, or running her household so well. Not that she got a degree for it, not that she got a cape and gown at the end of her lifetime for all that she did to raise that family, for how many holidays that she made happen. No. It was right here. This is her cap and gown. Mother's Open Ministry is Josie's cap and gown. And, and, and to celebrate her, what are you going to do with your unused time? There are some questions here that I want you to focus on during your uh, worry and walk is what we call it. Your walk out there at the park or if you're at home or if you're maybe in a hospital room. These are the things to meditate on. How? Here are some questions for you. How does the Bible's practice of marriage differ from the worldly practice of marriage or the worldly practice of domestic partnership? Number two, what is God's recommendation for mankind to achieve physical companionship, procreation, and physical pleasure? We know man's way. You don't need to be married to have a baby. <laughs> Come on. We know man's way. You know, you don't have to be married to have sex. We know man's way. We don't have to uh, court before marriage. We can just date and date multiple people. And come on. At the same time and just be, you know, trifling with it. Ungodly, secular, you know, have sex with this person and then have sex with that person. And then, you know, no. And I want to speak to men today as well. You know, I want to speak to men today as well. Just like mothers raise children and tell them, hey, you don't have to you know, buy the cow and get the milk for free. Well, man, you're worth something too. We should not be taking our girlfriends out on vacation and sleeping in the same room out on vacation during the courting process. We should not be spending overnights you know, and creating an open door for the devil to come into your relationship and make it self-gratifying. Yeah, because it's gonna sin is gonna be successful for a season or feel good for a season. But what you're doing is delaying. That may be the very person that God wants for you. And that doesn't mean that that relationship is totally off the table. It's off the table if they will not come into agreement and say, hey, we didn't start this off right. We have been operating in sin. We didn't start this thing off right. But I'm asking you to come into agreement with me because I believe you're the person for me. I believe you are the person that I'm supposed to be connected to to walk out God's plans on this earth in marriage. So we're going to cut out all vacations. We're going to cut out all overnight stays. We're going to cut out, you know, Sexting, texting, sexting. We're going to, you know, have, choose our, make the choices of words different. And you're not going to be able to do this in your own power. Listen, I was not able to give away my eating habits until God gave me a wake up call. So this might be your wake up call. My wake up call was I had a baby that, that had food allergies. And if I didn't stop eating certain things, she would stop breathing from my breast milk or from the formula. So guess what? The Lord gave me supernatural power. You want supernatural power? You want to live? You want to zile and live with vigor? Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. You're not going to be able to hear every word unless you create an environment to hear every word. That's what devotion in nature is about. It is about relaxing your prefrontal cortex, getting out of the mall. Don't have all your dates at the mall. No. Get out there with your uh, person that you're courting and, and, and take a walk outside. Phones put away. Oh, come on. We getting deep with it now. And we out there gardening together or painting together or serving and volunteering together. You know, that type of thing, getting busy about God's work together. You start off that way. That's what you're going to take into your marriage. 
All right. So me and I was saying you're worth something, too. You know, that's not being chivalrous. That's not being chivalrous to do everything for your girlfriend that you would do for your wife. No. No. A matter of fact, that's not being like God loves the church because God even required something of the bride before the bride becomes the bride. <laughs> you know what I mean? You have to be without spot or blemish before the Lord comes back for his bride. We need to be without spot or without blemish. So if your spouse, if your excuse me, if your girlfriend, what are we calling it now? Fiance, dating, significant. I don't know what, we, what is the term today, y'all? If your boo ain't willing to work towards being spot, spotless and without blemish, isn't willing to work towards being perfect is saying, ain't nobody perfect. Ain't nobody doing that. Cut it off. Cut it off. Flee. Run. It's in Proverbs somewhere. Run from sexual immorality. Run. Delete the phone number. Matter of fact, you may need to get a whole new phone because you may know yourself. Whatever it takes, run from it. And don't try to make it like, oh, I can make it better. Nope. 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 Nope, nope. But if they're willing to come into agreement and y'all willing to work it out, that just might be the person. But don't, and it, and it may be the person not the right time because you need to develop a discipline as well within yourself. Or it may be the right time, but you guys just not willing to come to agreement on the changes. So that makes it the wrong time until you're willing to come into agreement. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you and through his word. Hallelujah. Number three, what are the benefits of my physical, of my personal relationship with Christ? The benefits of your personal, and I'm answering it now too. The benefits of your personal relationship with Christ, one of them is supernatural power. Mm, mm, mm. You are able to do through the Holy Spirit what you could not do without the Holy Spirit. Marriage is for those that know the truth. Hallelujah. First Timothy chapter four, verses three through five. <clears throat> Excuse me, this is the scripture here I wanted to talk about here. Let's see. It says, uh, NIV, they forbid people to marry and order them to abstain from certain foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and who know the truth. Did you hear that? Marriage is for those who know the truth. The truth. Do you know Christ as your savior? You're not ready to be married. And maybe you're married already to somebody who doesn't know Christ as their savior. Should you get divorced? That's something you need to take up with the Lord. I don't believe God is a, would support divorce. I believe God may use you and you pursuing the things of God to influence that spouse for the kingdom. That's something you need to work out with your pastor. You need to get in a Bible-based church and you need to really seek the Lord and the Holy Spirit about what to do. Because it's not always black and white. It's not always. But the Holy Spirit will give you supernatural power to do what you can't do on your own. Amen. God created marriage for those who know the truth. What are two ways the Bible teaches us to bring marriage, to bring truth into our marriage and other spirit led relationships? Hmm. You have to see verse five about that. First Timothy chapter four, verse three through five. What are two ways we can bring truth into our marriage and other spiritual relationships? See 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 5 for those two ways. Mm -hmm. Amen. So uh, save that trash. Save that time. I'm going to have my husband today at uh, Smith Springs give some closing remarks about are we willing to allow God to repurpose our marriage? Because a marriage without God, without submission to God, without prayer, without the word is trash. It is not being used for God purposes. But that God wants to save that trash. You may even have divorced. But God has been touching your heart. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. But God has been touching your heart about your person that you that you are uh, divorced. Listen, God can repurpose you individually. He can repurpose that broken relationship because maybe it's not so much for you guys to come back together, but he can repurpose that for 
the upbringing of the children that that union produced. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody to show that child the way. Hallelujah. So we're going to today observe the Lord's Supper. And uh, my husband's going to do that Smith Springs as well. But if you have not asked Christ to be your savior, Romans chapter three, verse 23 says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So the first thing you have to do is admit that you're a sinner. You have to admit that you have gone wrong. And that's even for marriage. You want things to be repurposed for God's glory. Sometimes it's an apology. Sometimes it's admitting that, hey, I think I was, I was, or saying I was wrong, or this is the reason for my perspective, but I have a different perspective now because of X, Y, Z. Now, uh, if you want to be saved, you have to do what John chapter 14, verse six says. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the father except through me. So you have to believe. You have to believe that God loves you. God loves you. I love how Joyce Meyer always says, God will never love you more than he loves you right now. God sent his only begotten son to die for you while you were yet in your sins. That's an amazing love. That's a sacrificial love. That's what we have to bring into our marriage. Sacrificial love. Sacrificing my will, my desires for my spouse. And we have to call upon his name, according to Romans chapter 10, verse 13. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Is your marriage down in the trash? Guess what? One of the definitions of zeal or to live, remember Luke 4, 4, 4, 4, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. One of the definitions or the Bible usages of that word live is to be worthy of the name. Let me go back to that. <clears throat> yes, to enjoy real life, to have true life and worthy of the name. Is your marriage worthy of the name? Woo! Is, is your relationship with Christ worthy of the name? Is your life so hidden in Christ that, that it's worthy of the name? Or have you been a, a, a convenient Christian? You know, you take these jobs or you've taken three jobs and you have absolutely no Sabbath day, no day for meditating on the word of God. And you say, well, I have to do this. Is that worthy of the name? I know I'm challenging some things here. Is that worthy of the name? So right now, we're going to pray right now. If you are a sinner and you have not made Christ your Savior, repeat after me. Father God. I have sinned and fallen short of your glory. Today, I believe that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. I believe that I cannot come to you except through Jesus. So today, I call upon the name of the Lord, Jesus. Jesus, save me. And I believe without a shadow of a doubt that I am saved in Jesus name. Amen. If you pray that prayer today, please connect with us. Go to mothersopeministry.com. Visit us at Smith Springs today at 10 a.m. Uh, listen, if Smith Springs today is full because of the Easter egg hunt, we will probably move over to Mill Ridge Park. So you'll need to text us at 615 615- 212-9111 to get the relocation. Or you can just take this video with you in your Bluetooth and make that walk at Smith Springs still there on the indoor track and enjoy your personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Listen, today we're going to be doing gardening. Every devotion nation, we do gardening, painting, and we take a walk with family. We meditate on the word of God. We invite you out to our devotion and nature services. And listen, if you have not been baptized, because the scripture talks about being saved by baptism as well, but really it's about, guess what? Uh, we are continually, 
continually growing and changing and becoming more and more like Christ as we become a bride without spot or blemish. Okay, we have to continue to purify our lives. So we purify our lives by being obedient to the entire word of God, not part of it, but the entire word of God. Not so much saying that we have to, you know, sacrifice an animal now or do some of the customary things that were in Old Testament. But we have to continue to pursue Christ and listen for the Holy Spirit as it relates what we do in our day to day. God is still speaking. We want you to be baptized. We have a partnership. <clears throat> we will take you up to the YMCA <clears throat> and we will baptize you in the YMCA pool for the remissions of your sins. And we believe that you're going to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Listen, right now, the Holy Spirit is living inside of you. If you have admitted you're a sinner, confess that you believe in Jesus and called upon his name. We believe through that sinner's prayer that you have been saved. The Holy Spirit is living inside of you. It's going to give you a conscience and we're going to help you become more sensitive to hearing every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. How are we going to do that? We got to free ourselves of distraction. We've got to have devotion. We have to have our Sabbath. We have to prepare for our Sabbath. Uh Uh-oh, that's a whole nother study right there. We did that before, that there was a day of prep, there was preparation before the Sabbath, getting the food ready and the animals ready so that you could have that rest. Have you prepared your marriage for rest? Oh, come on. That's that's next year, y'all. That's next year. We're going to do that. Have you prepared your marriage for what God has purposed it to do in the air? I believe that these few years here, God is preparing our marriage for what he's going to do in the next season. Whatever it is, we say yes to the Lord. Listen, we believe that uh, no gift, no good thing will God withhold from us. We believe that there is a unique utterance, a holy language, a heavenly language of speaking in tongues that God wants to give to you. We believe that God uh, saves us by his word and that we don't believe it's a prerequisite to salvation to speak in tongues, but we believe that speaking in tongues is a gift from God. It's not just something to freak everybody out. No, it's something that builds us up that is supernatural. Remember Remember I told you with the Holy Spirit inside of you, you can do the supernatural. You can influence a spouse to come closer to Christ. You can, <clears throat> excuse me, you can change your diet when you haven't been able to change it. Listen, and I was saved before Micaiah came into the world and I still wasn't willing to change. But so, God, God keeps giving more and more of his self to you as you pursue after him. And I was pursuing after God. I was pursuing after God. So he increased my capacity to change. So that when I stepped into that moment of destiny of motherhood, I had what it took to be able to put aside every weight that so easily beset me, even my little Caesar's pizza. Okay, come on, somebody. <laughs> you got to have a sense of humor. You got to have a sense of humor. Okay. Have you? And the last thing, we have this self-evaluation. It's called a communication receipt <clears throat> that we want you to take at the end of your personal study. And it just says, You know, you you reread the objectives. Remember today that our objective was we will live richly by making the best of our unused time. Don't stay in the bed this morning. You know, how are you going to make the best of your unused time? You're going to go to devotion in nature. You're going to take a walk. You're going to paint a picture. You're going to garden. You're going to do something that helps you to relax so that you can hear from God. Every word, every word. every word. Hallelujah. So it says here, um, and if you have a mentor, what you do is you fill it out and you exchange it with your mentor, you exchange it with your spouse. So it says, dear mentor, today I attended, and that would be devotion in nature. I learned a lot, but I would like to like to talk to you about something. And then you list what the problem is. What was the objective that you missed? Most of the time it's multiple objectives, but what objective did you miss? What, what, What is what unused time is it hard or unused gift is it hard for you to use? And then you're going to list the type of support that you need, maybe for your spouse. Hey, I think that, you know, I've missed this opportunity to have devotion with you. Or I've missed this opportunity to to build this prayer garden with you. You know, look back on those old things that we've done. I've missed this opportunity to change my diet so that I could be more healthier in my marriage. Um, And this is the type of support that I need. Uh, You could check prayer 
or a compassionate friend, scriptures, you need sound advice. I need help confronting or discussing this problem with somebody else. I need a connection with community or agency resources. I need insurance, you know, hubby, hubby or, or wifey. I, I need insurance. Can you help me? I know maybe I've lost my job now and I have a little bit too much, you know, pride to try to get some financial resources with this. Can you help me? you know, help me with my application, you know, help me with this, you know, or it might be whatever it is, help each other. And then <clears throat> dear mentee, I have prayed and I feel I can help you. So this, the second part is where they respond to you. And then you can write in words of encouragement for your spouse or your prayer partner, or maybe this is just you and the Holy Spirit, what you're going to do to make these changes. And then you sign off at the bottom. Uh, we have a, my dreams, um, a director, Coach Dante Bond, who can help you with this process as well, or one of our board members can advise you if you are needing some additional spiritual advisement on this process of becoming closer with Jesus. Maybe you need somebody to help lead you in communion. We can do that. Maybe you need baptism. We can do that. Hallelujah. Um, so email us at prayer at mothersoakmillministry.com uh, or admin admin at mothersoplaministry.com, and we will respond to you. Let's pray. to God not speak to us today on repurposed for God's glory? Your marriage is new today. Your relationship with God is new today. God wants you to save that trash. Don't throw it out. Don't go get the divorce. Don't, you know, if you've got the divorce, feel like there's nothing that you can work with your uh, co-parent with with that child. You you know, no, God wants to save that trash. That God wants to save that time that you have. Whatever it is, what gift he's put in your hand. Hallelujah. For his glory. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you today for marriage. We believe it is a good thing. We believe you prescribed it for to heal our loneliness through procreation and physical companionship, God. And, and through physical pleasure, Lord. Maybe there's somebody that wants to be married, God, has been waiting. I ask you to bring that spouse. Hallelujah. And in their waiting, Lord God, fulfill their desires. Fill their desire not to be lonely, Lord. Give them key friendships. Give them a passion for life. Give them something to pursue after you so that they'll, that spouse We'll see them pursuing you and be attracted to that in them. Oh, God, we thank you for that great marriage that took place when we became saved, God. Somebody accepted you as Savior today, God. There was a marriage today, God, and we are celebrating that. We ask, Lord Jesus, that you help us to be without spot or blemish, to be kind, you know, to carry the fruit of the spirit, to bear the fruit of the spirit, God. Maybe our physical bodies may be barren, but we can bear the fruit of the spirit. We can show love. We can comfort the brokenhearted. We can foster uh, relationship our life, God. Oh, glory. Oh, glory. We will fulfill those purposes. We will not let our time on this earth be unused or be used for any purpose that does not Build the kingdom of God. We're going to practice this covenant, God. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. We're going to keep marriage and promote marriage between married, between male and female, Lord God. And Lord Jesus, as we come together as your church, Lord, Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 12 says, Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A three-fold cord, a three full cord, a cord of three strands is not easily broken, Lord. And so I ask God that the church, one church can be overpowered. But I ask, oh, oh, I ask that the churches come together. Hallelujah. That the churches, congregations come together because one of us, one church, one congregation may be overpowered when legislation is being passed that is not in agreement or in alignment with the teachings of Jesus. But when the church comes together, 
Oh, when the body of believers, even those in individual households, those church homes, that Bible, women's Bible study group here and there, Lord, when we come together and we speak out, we know that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through you to the pulling down of strongholds. We pull down strongholds that are coming against marriage. We pull down and break yokes that are coming against these relationships, these pastors who are together, God, and, and, and all that is coming against them to break that relationship, God. We breathe your breath, God, into those relationships, especially of leaders, God, in ministry, God. Oh, I feel your Holy Ghost presence, God, that we will not be overpowered, but we're going to come together. Oh, I feel that God is bringing leaders, leaders, marriages and leaders, co-pastors, uh, uh, wife and husband, co-pastors, co-pastors together, several of them in maybe a conference are getting ready to come together. We're moving into the prophetic, y'all. There's a conference coming. I don't know if it's coming through this ministry or somewhere else, but a conference for marriages. Hallelujah. Are they going to come together because the, the because marriage the union, the institution of marriage in our land, uh, the, the devil is trying to overpower it, but we're going to come together and we're going to set the foundation for the future generation. Our children will know what holy marriage is, what biblical marriage is. Hallelujah. And we will not be overpowered because God, you are the third cord in our marriage. You are the third cord in our marriage. And I pray over my marriage, God, in the name of Jesus, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And that every tongue that rises up against us will be utterly cast down, tripped up, drowned. Because we are pursuing your will in the earth. And we seal this prayer with the name that is above every name. Come on, call that name. Come on, call that name. Come on with tears in your eyes, call on the name. Come on with a broken heart, call on the name. Come on, you feel like you're gonna give up, but call on the name, call on the name. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hey, there's something about the name. Yay, demons tremble at the name. Wolves and predators retreat at the name, Jesus, because we know the name. We know the name and we know the story that you didn't just stay in that tomb, God, but you got up. <laughs> you got up out of that tomb. You did the supernatural and you got all power in your hand. That's why demons tremble because you got up, because you did what they could not do. You did the supernatural. Thank you for the name. We worship you, Jesus. Let's take a moment to listen right now. Jesus is speaking. Listen. Mm. Something about the name Jesus. Something about the name Jesus. It is the sweetest name I know. Oh, how I love the name Jesus. Oh, how I love the name Jesus. God is speaking. It is the sweetest name I know. What's your name? Oh, how he loves the name. Precious. What's your name? What's your name? Oh, how he loves the name, Micaiah. It is the sweetest name. He knows. That's what the Holy Spirit is saying. Oh, how he loves the name. See you. <clears throat> oh, how he loves the name. Child of God. It is the sweetest name. 
He knows. Hey, he died for that name. He rose for that name. It is the sweetest name. <laughs> My child, he knows your child is the sweetest thing to you as a parent. Well, you are the sweetest thing to God. And God's sacrificial love wants to save you, wants to save your marriage, wants to save that relationship. But you've got to save your unused time, your unused gifts, your unused potential for his glory. And don't go in your own strength, but say, Holy Spirit, go with me. Go with me. Go with me. Be with me. Be before me. Be in me. Hallelujah. And you will not be overcome. God bless you. Make a donation to continue this work and sustain this work at mothersoatmillministry.com. We appreciate your time. We appreciate your financial support. We appreciate your presence. Be blessed.